Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to It's Gorgomatic. I am Tim McNiff with a Kips Gorgomatic. Kevin Gorg back off a plane early this morning and Minnesota State Senator Carla Bigham, who joins us every Thursday. And as I said in the social media post, I just got out just a few minutes ago. I got a radio off late, of course. I said, I'm not a bad guy. I asked both of them and they wanted to work. So your, your families aren't mad at me, right? We're OK. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it's early. You know, we don't start the festivities till kickoff time. And we've kind of traditionally done our, we have two gatherings today, uh, one on each side of our, our families. And the early one always starts at the kickoff of the first game. The second one is dessert. It always starts out at the start of the second game. And we're always at the movie by seven o'clock as a group. We've got 12 of us tonight to go see uh, House of Gucci with Lady oh. Gaga. Super excited for that. Yeah. So I didn't realize you guys were movie buffs as well. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, we may have to do an Oscar episode of Gorgomatic. I love that idea. And there's betting <laughs> odds on it. So it ties yes. into the show, Timmy. And yeah. I've already got a pick for the leading role uh, as an actress. I think uh, Kirsten Stewart, who played Lady Diana oh. in Spencer, uh, would be my pick right now as we're a few months away. But, yeah, I love that idea, Senator. Yeah, yeah. So, so not just a, not just a nomination for Stewart. You're she's your early favorite in the clubhouse. I'm going to give her the trophy. I, I'm going to crown her right now. I I I thought the performance uh, was mind blowing, and the movie itself was okay, a little on the heavy side for me. But her performance, uh, you forget you're watching her and think you're watching actual footage of of uh, the great lady die. It, it was really well done by her. Okay, so not having seen that, do you watch? The, the series, The Crown. I don't, but I will now. I'm very I, curious. I do. I do. You, you do, Carla? Absolutely. So what did you think of the woman, and I don't know her name, the actress who played uh, Princess Di in the series? Um, good. I, th I thought she did phenomenal. Um, I will say this. The queen, the actress, and I'm drawing a blank on her name, um, and then <clears throat> Jillian, um, wow. Wow, it's early. Uh, she, she was in uh, the series with uh, D David Duchovny, Jillian yeah. Anderson. Yeah, um, Jillian Anderson. I, I, Thatcher. I just, and, and Thatcher was like when I was young, right? Like I was really young when Thatcher was around. But I've done a lot of reading on her. And actually, even though we may not be of the same political mindset, I admire her. I admire her tenacity. I admire um, just her guts and um, the the you know, just how she led. And, and I think like, um, seeing her being played by her was amazing. I mean, it's just a lot of talent in that, that show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unrecognizable. Julian Anderson was unrecognizable uh, as being Margaret Thatcher playing someone who's much older than herself and, yeah. and, and did so phenomenally. Yeah. So that's what, but back to KG, that's what will be my measuring stick. I was so taken by the actress who played princess Di. I thought she killed it. And I was disappointed when she did, wasn't rewarded with hardware for that, but lost out to people from her own show. Right. So uh, I'll be, I'll be interested to compare the Christmas. Good to be the there. queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, and so I think I think we're our, uh, we're going to get into our foray into the uh, big picture series. Um, Saturday we're going to see Belfast, which I know you've already seen. Yeah, I loved it. Terrific movie. Uh, really um, takes you to a place. Like I love a movie that is a timepiece and it brings you somewhere you haven't been. Enlighten me. That's not Fenway. That's a deeper bark than Fenway. He'll get after me already. He's already giving me the look. For 9 a.m. feeding, I'm like, dude, it's not 9 a.m. But uh, it's Thanksgiving. Everybody gets the gobble till they wobble. That's right. That's right. I love that. Um, it's actually a squirrel. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my thing for tonight is uh, I hope to be watching, and we have to figure out, can I get Disney Plus for a seven-day trial subscription? Because I want and need to see Get Back, the Peter Jackson restoration of that uh, Beatles footage. This to me will be, I think, emotional for both Amy and myself. We're huge Beatles fans. We both had older brothers and sisters who exposed us to the Beatles at a very young age. You know, I remember you'd sit around and listen to older kids talk about they're getting back together. You know, they're going to play at whatever. And you always were like, oh, the Beatles are getting back together. You know, and then, of course, we John Lennon was stolen from us and and uh, been so much written and said throughout the years. And now be able to see them right near the end of their career kind of you know, how it works, how it doesn't work. I'm really intrigued to see this. 
Yeah, I, I would just say that the world, most of the world, including myself, found out the night that John Lennon was taken from us on Monday Night Football from Howard Cosell. Um, I, for me, I, I get asked the question in a lot of trivia situations, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. It's not close for me. It's the Beatles. I, I, I just adore their music, and I love their story. Carla? Uh, I, my mom tells me that um, I had uh, my ear tubes put in my ears the day that Lennon died. Wow. So, um, yeah, so that's how she always remembers, uh, remembers that. So, yeah, I mean, I absolutely adore their music. Um, the whole gamut of it, uh, such a talent. I, when McCartney um, came through a few years ago, now it's probably about 10 years ago, um, I got tickets with my best friend. I mean, and it's just amazing uh, to see him perform, um, even if it's not with the Beatles, but you just, he's just an amazing, amazing person um, and um, just musician. And I always remember how much he loved Linda. Um, it was just palpable. Uh, I mean, he was, she was his everything. Um, and so I think that it's just a kind, kind man. You can just tell. Well, I think that's, what's interesting about this is that you, you see the four of them in the room, the other dynamics going on around them. Uh, Yoko is there and, and the young Linda is there as a photographer, not yet Linda McCartney, you know, and so you see the, the, the budding of that romance, I guess, all in this film. And going back to the night that John Lennon was died, I remember one of the local DJs ending his shift with, you know, the, the song where they end with, and in the end, the love you make is equal to the love you take. Oh, I lost it. You know I mean? Mm -hmm. I just, that, that to me was so moving and poignant and, and, you know, so, but you, you'll, as you guys get to know me, unfortunately, you'll know, I cry at commercials. I cry <laughs> at, you know, uh, sunny days, you know, whatever. So I, it's, it's, yeah. So whatever. I don't, I don't cry at lions and bears games, thankfully. So <laughs> let's uh, hope not. I, I might. The I game might, might this make way. you cry the way these teams have played. Who knows? You might be in tears. <laughs> I'll be put to the test. <laughs> oh boy! Send a text if you cry. I love it. Okay, so I did some. I did some last minute adjusting to this. Oh, we we already have who's on here. Okay, Jesse uh, Heinrich, Jesse Pierce, uh, weighing in to say a happy Thanksgiving to us, but she also is going to drag you guys into the LPE controversy. Uh -oh. I don't know if you guys know this, but Tyler Furness put out on social media earlier this week, he said, this is your yearly reminder that gravy is the best Thanksgiving day food. And, and I'm like, it's not a food. First thought was, well, not really a food. Right. And then it's I important. thought, yeah, but you know, <laughs> I, my wife crushes gravy, whether it's Turkey or pork and, and so I'm like, I love mashed potatoes. I love turkey. I love dressing all made better, in my opinion, with gravy. So I put, hard to argue this one, because gravy, the power of gravy makes all these all foods I love even better. And Jesse put out there, no gravy on my plate ever. And wow. so, that, so we've been going back and forth on LPE. So I'll start with you, KG. Where do you come down on the controversial gravy issue? Well, you have to have it, and, and, and at least on my plate, it, it's got to be. And it, to be honest, to to your point, it's mixed into the the gravy, the potatoes, and absolutely the turkey. I I just love the gravy. And what else? You know, that's what makes Thanksgiving extra special for me. What else do you have gravy with a meal? I mean, I don't think of many meals throughout the calendar year where we get to have it. It's extraordinary, and this is my favorite holiday, so I will partake. Okay, just Carla, I'll get you in a second, but I just got to jump in on this. My wife will fry pork chops and make oh. a yes, and oh. will make a pork gravy, and she has the mashed potatoes. And this is almost a weekly occurrence, and not because of me either. Um, my youngest oh. daughter loves this, and she'll be home, and she'll be like, "Well, will you make that for me, mom?" And of course, my my wife's always, "Oh, of course she will." And I'm just like, "I don't even have to more ask for me, for it. <laughs> <laughs> Carla." Um, I probably put, um, just a dabble on my plate to dip into turkey or potatoes. I think it covers a lot of stuff up and, um, I'd rather save calories for the pumpkin cheesecake and pumpkin pie. That's just my <laughs> thing. But as I said, true blue Minnesotan here, it's green bean casserole is the oh. best thing of, of, of Thanksgiving. I mean, just can't get more Minnesotan than that. Now you're right about that. It, it, and both sides of the family. Uh, pulls that off on our end too. Yeah, that that's that's very good. But 
that just gets a little small corner of my plate. I mean, I, the turkey, <laughs> the mashed potatoes, and the gravy mixed in together, it takes me to a place that I, no, no other meal can get me. I, I really do enjoy this day as much as any in the calendar. So let's let's bring in cranberries to the equation. Do you guys? Let's, do let's actually not. No, let's not bring them in. <laughs> there that, we go. No, thank you. Or beets or anything red. I don't want anything red on my plate. It's all brown. It's all white. And it's all good. <laughs> I, I I like the the canned cranberries. I might be a little weird. I don't do I don't do the homemade things. My my sister can get a little uh, tricky, tricky on us and, and fancy. And uh, I just open the can of lotion spray cranberries and it better oh, have yeah. the ridge in it and just right into a bowl. Okay. <laughs> so here, here's my play on this, Carla. Tell me if you do this or not. So the way I was raised was, so you ate the turkey and everything. Then you went out and did something at night and you came back and you had turkey sandwiches that night. And the way my mom made them was she would butter the bread in both sides, put down the turkey, put the mash, the stuffing on top of the turkey, oh. and then put the cranberry sauce on top of the stuffing. And it acts like a jelly and you eat it. And Ooh. I'm like, God, it is just like, and so I have this the next day for lunch. And then I, the next night, I take the, the turkey and put it in the gravy, heat it up and have the classic open face sandwich. Oh yeah. You the know, commercial. with all that. So like I gained like seven pounds over the next, you know, or over like a 48 it. hour period. It's, it's so worth, worth it. it. Yeah. It's you got to do it. It's Thanksgiving. You'll get back to it next week. You get back out in the trail, but right now it's all about the food. I mean, the couch, the food, the nap, it, it, it's just, what other holiday? I mean, do you get away with this where you don't have to shop and have a list right. and get all the, the gifts you need and run? You just have to eat food and watch football and maybe squeeze a nap in. I mean, this is heaven. Right. So, um, I, uh, I make, uh, turkey pot pies. I did them last year ooh. because of COVID and everything like that. We had extra, extra stuff and, you know, pie crust, you have to buy two. They come two in a pack. So I'm like, I, anyway, so I, my husband asked me yesterday, kind of sheepishly, like, are you going to make this pot pies this year? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I'm like, and he's like, yes. So that's the only gravy type thing I, I make, uh, getting back to that. My mom crushes gravy and I had an unfortunate incident my first uh, year being married where I used the shaker thing with the water and the flour and it went kaboom. And my oh. husband has never, ever let me forget it because he was up there wiping gravy off the <laughs> ceiling. And so he's like, can you please it's just like let me deal with it? Yeah. So. <laughs> nice. Was, yeah, it was. It, it, and I tell you what, like that is one of his favorite memories of me. And we've been married 10 years, so. Almost. Hey, so. I love it. So the, the turkey pot pie, is that a recipe? Uh, no, that's um, might be Pillsbury. Yes. Yes. It might be from Pillsbury. And so you just, I just put the, I just mix the gravy, make some gravy. And then um, with some poultry seasoning or like from turkey drippings or whatever. And then I put the turkey in the mashed potatoes and then, um, the some of the some vegetables and then i put the pie crust over it the gravy inside it pie crust over it and we bake it a couple slits a little I'll, be over, on top. I'll be over about 9 30. i was about to say yeah, yeah. are you making After that the movie pie i'll crust? stop by yeah holy cow <laughs> are you making yeah. that pie crust or are you buying that pie oh crust? no i buy that i buy that so yeah. that's something i could buy i don't have oh, to yeah. make correct Yep. So I'm new to the whole cooking world. My wife has, has taken a job where so, so she works later than I do. So like I become the guy and it's poor sure. her, but at least I try. Right. So this sure. is all new to me. So I'm, I'm intrigued. I would be happy with the turkey pot pie recipe. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. going to, he's going to love it. He may, he may say, can we wait for the gopher game on Saturday? That's where, so he can have it during the gopher game. So I'm eating the first half, right? KG. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get sick if things are going pear shaped and the ax is heading back down 94. So uh, yeah, eat it early. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about today's games. And I said, I might cry over this one. And, you know, the lions are part of our Thanksgiving tradition and I would not change it, but I just oh. wish they, they would be a little more relevant and a little easier to watch it sometimes. And the bears are down this year too. So you have the three and seven bears at the Oh, nine and one lions. <laughs> The Bears given three and a half with an over under of 41 and a half. Uh, Mr. Gorg. Well, you know, it's one of those spots where you, you have to feel like the way Detroit has played, they've been so close to winning. We know firsthand here 
in uh, in the Twin Cities that they have put up a great fight. They tied at Pittsburgh. They probably should have won that game with that late rally here at U.S. Bank. I, this just feels like the right spot. You know, you don't have Justin Fields out there. You've got the old man, uh, Red Rifle, Andy Dalton, and they're laying points on the road. And Detroit is going to be up for this game. This is a Thanksgiving tradition. I love the emotion of their coach, and I just think today's the day. I don't have this great epiphany where there's all kinds of great numbers to support me, but I think if you're going to get uh, points from a home team that's going to be motivated with a big crowd, they haven't played in front of big crowds a lot in Detroit, this is the time to do it. And Chicago is 1-9 and against the spread uh, when they play an opponent on a Thursday off a loss. It's a crazy stat, right? I mean, how many Thursday games are you playing? I'm reaching here, but I'm taking the Motor City Kitties. Give me that Detroit. Well, uh, Carla, your thoughts? Uh, you know, I uh, think of the three games. This is the one where I'm going to sit and talk to to my family the most. Um, <laughs> and, um, man, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't even know who's starting for Detroit. Have they even named somebody? Uh, Jared so. Goff, Goff is going to play. He's back. He, he is going to try to play. give it a go. Okay. I mean, I he's, hadn't, he's, I hadn't he's not checked. healthy, but he's going to try to play. Okay. Yeah, I haven't checked Twitter yet. Um, I, I'm i with you on Andy Dalton, but uh, he still knows his way around the field. Um, still knows those players. Not that he has many. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't even really know what to think of the game. I think it could go either way, but uh, I'm going to go because it's a home game and it's Thanksgiving. I also would, I'm, I would also uh, say Lions. And I don't think it'll be a high-scoring game at all, but I think it'll be a busy game. So. KG, I want to take you way back. I'm a freshman in high school, and um, I'm picking games for my homeroom teacher, and I'm on a roll, and I'm winning you know, money week after week, of which he's giving me none, but he's Whoops. winning money off my picks. And we get to Thursday, I hand him my picks, and he grabs me. He goes, what are you thinking? And the Denver Broncos were coming off of their Super Bowl appearance, and their quarterback was Craig Morton. And, oh, and they yeah. were playing at the Lions on, on uh, Thanksgiving, and I picked the Lions. He goes, what are you thinking? I go, no, 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 no. Lions got a rookie defensive end by the name of Al Baker, and he is going to be laying on top of Craig Morton all afternoon. Trust me. No way. And the Lions crushed the the Broncos. And nobody – I like that was one of those days where I needed to have you or or a way to get my thoughts past the – homeroom or the teacher's pool at White Bear Mariner High School. Oh, my you know, gosh. I was the only one who picked the Lions that day. I'm going to say 77. You know, Yeah, that. it was late 70s when Morton was their quarterback. And back to that, that strategy, he was a great quarterback who was not very mobile. Uh, <laughs> and if you got pressure from the outside, there was no, you know, Fran Tarkenton in him at that level. And so great pick. And I'm sure at that point now, uh, you were probably hired full time to be his uh, his handicapper. Did the whole season for him at the end of the year? He won the he won the he won the cumulative thing and won the playoff thing. He gave me five dollars out of the whole, the whole thing. So guess what I did? I transferred homerooms. I went to different teachers. We had a deal. He came up recruiting me. I go, "What's my cut?" And he goes, "You'll get fifty percent." I go, 50 50? Boom, I'm there. So I transferred out of that guy's homeroom went to the other guy's. You homeroom. basically like, held out. It was like a contract dispute. You <laughs> held out. Didn't even use an agent and said, no, no, $5 isn't working for me. I want <laughs> half, baby. And you got paid. And the well downside done. was there was a math teacher who was also a football coach who hated me because he had been the big fish in that thing until I came along. And I'm like, why does this guy hate me? And my homeroom teacher's like, why do you think you're, That's you're taking fabulous. this money? That's <laughs> great. <laughs> nice. Anyway, I digress. Back to football. You've got a you've got a, a prop play for us today, and and I like this play because out of a lost season for Detroit, this has been a bright spot, and it, I worry about this kid because I just don't want him to be the next yeah. uh, um, Billy Sims. I just don't want him to get an injury and be lost. Yeah, if there's a reason to watch the Detroit Lions, it's DeAndre Swift. He's been yep. unbelievably good, and you think of a team that doesn't have a win, that's 0-9-1, you, you probably think that they're not even using a running back, but this guy consistently goes over 100 combo yards, consistently scores a touchdown. It seems like every single week. And so, yeah, I, I, give me the prop play today where I get a touchdown and I get plus money. I get plus 120, swift touchdown, a lion win, and we'll start Thanksgiving the right way. I got to admit, I love when you say yes, please. <laughs> so just try to work that in whenever you can. When you get I something do my you really best. like a lot. I okay. love that. When you go, yes, please. 
<laughs> and we're also oh, going to think Bigham on this game too. What do you got for us, Carla? Uh, I think that uh, Chicago has an average of 100 and over 132 yards a game. Uh, and well, it's the Lions defense. So no reason to think uh, they won't get it. I really like David Montgomery. Um, he's uh, healthy ish um, today. And uh, I just think he's going to, be their go-to person. Um, neither team really has a lot of tools other than TJ Hawkinson and on, on the lions. And so I'm going to go plus 75 and 76, sorry, uh, and a half yards uh, rushing for Montgomery today. Love KG, it. What do you think? Yeah. In daily, I, that was the player I, I chose to be my, <laughs> my top uh, gunner from Chicago. I did a, a, you know, there's three games. So I sprinkled, players from all six teams and Montgomery to me makes the most sense. I, I like uh, the Senator agree that it's going to be a tight, low scoring game, you know, kind of that 23 to 20 type of range. Mm -hmm. And I think that both running backs uh, will have significant uh, fantasy value. So I absolutely like the play. I do too. All right. Our second game today at one point had a lot more luster to it. Uh, it's yeah. somewhat clouded in recent weeks. We got the Las Vegas Raiders taking a 5-5 five and five record into Dallas. The Cowboys are still 7-3, and three, although it seems like they should be worse than that because of the losses that they've had. You kind of are losing a little steam in Dallas, or I am losing a little steam in Dallas. The line on this game, Cowboys uh, minus 7, the over-under 51 kg. Well, we've talked about this in, in the last few shows. I, I kind of feel like uh, the turkey around 1 o'clock is the Raiders. It's cooked. I mean, they've... They've been through the ringer, man. I mean, they've just yeah. been through it all with the Gruden situation and then their, their wide receiver and that unfortunate, uh, you know, obviously he's in jail and he's gone. And so there's a lot of emotion involved with the football season and it hasn't been the good one uh, for the Raiders. On the flip side, Dallas played Kansas City at the wrong time. It's not who you play, it's when you play them. The Chiefs are getting right. It was windy. Both quarterbacks struggled. It, this feels like a day where Dallas is going to get right. It's Thanksgiving indoors. Dak can do his thing. Uh, they're down some weapons. I mean, Amari Cooper with COVID, C.D. Lamb uh, with a concussion, unlikely to play. Load up your Michael Gallup and load up maybe one of their tight ends in, in, in daily. But man, they're, they're really in a, in a hurting spot with the receivers. But with the Raiders, you're not going to have to do much. Just give it to Pollard, give it to Zeke. And I, I just see Dallas cruising here. I, I think Dallas wins by double digits. They're a team going somewhere I think the Raiders season ended a couple weeks ago under the lights against Kansas City. I think there's no return for the silver and black this year. Senator? Uh, I think that's low. I think it'll be uh, Cowboys by 10. I mean, I think I, I think we – it's going to be – I think oddly, uh, I think Schultz is going to have a game tonight, and I know that mm -hmm. that's my prop play. But I I think um, without C.D. Lamb and Cooper, that's, that's his man, and I think he's just going to – try and target him. And he's pretty much on fire these days. I mean, he's just a wonderful tool for them. And then um, as KG said, you have the two running backs, Pollard and Zeke that are um, lights out. I mean, you don't want them coming at you. Uh, they'll do some damage. They'll burn you. Um, I, I actually think it's going to be a high scoring game, but, and I think there'll be a lot of passing. I just, both of these quarterbacks are known for that. I mean, Carr leads, I think the league in passing yards, I think. Um, and he throws going to, I think, have a game on um, his his side of the ball. But um, we'll see. I mean, Dallas has uh, kind of been a little little inconsistent. Um, I kind of thought that they maybe they, if they would be more consistent, I'd feel more confident about them. But they're going to win. It's at home. It's on Thanksgiving. Um, and it's against Raiders who are even more inconsistent. The center mentioned her prop play. She's got yes, Dalton Schultz to tight end for the Cowboys going over 50 and a half. Uh, receiving in this game. Uh, KG, you have a prop play in this game also. Yeah, I, I think that you know that it's going to be a throwing mm -hmm. game and it's going to be some points scored, but I was super impressed with Dallas's defense again last week. I know the wind was blowing, but they kept Patrick Mahomes out of the end zone, which is almost impossible to do. So I think they can keep Carr under the 269. I don't think it's going to be easy because I think the Raiders are going to have to throw the football. But I, you've talked about, Timmy, this defense on the Dallas side is not the defense we watched the last couple of years. They're much improved. I think they're going to make life tough. I think there's going to be some interceptions. And I think in the end, they're going to squeak by on this prop. I think they're the right play. I like their defense. I've got the game 34 to 10 Dallas. So I feel strongly about the Cowboys. And if the Raiders are going to score 10 points, I've got to go under on the car passing here. 
Can sure. I ask you? Can I ask you a DFS question? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have multiple lineups or not. In, or just, I do. do. Do you have one for like a championship or MVP mode where it's a five person game? You no, in mine it's it's all salary based, and I have to use all three games. And so I, I of all the the six teams available, I have the least amount of Saints and Raiders, and I only have Hunter Renfro in my lineup because he's kind of the underneath dink and dunk guy, so he'll get a bunch of catches. Yep. yep. So, um, so my I question was about playing in a five person championship league game. I'm thinking about putting it one one lineup at least with, that has both Pollard and Elliott. I, I think you're going to have to. I think that it's going to be a, I would guess, a 50-50 split today with what they're saying out of Dallas. Zeke's still banged up. Uh, it's a quick turnaround on, on a Thursday. That was a really physical, tough game in Kansas City because of the weather. Um, you've got you know two good backs, a lot like the Vikings have, but unlike Dalvin Cook being full bore right now, you know they're, they're saying Zeke is kind of fighting through some things. So I think you're going to see Pollard make quite the impact. If I had, if push came to shove, and I had to use one of the two in a starring role, I would actually lean Pollard here today. Yeah, because I yeah. play super drafts, so the multiplier is higher there, you know. But uh, so I, I think of that. But I just I, I find it looking through there with the two receivers being out and thinking that they're going to have a lead. I just feel yeah. like I got you're probably going to want to get Zeke in the end zone because he hasn't scored in four games and he hasn't had a run longer than eleven yards. And no, he's their better receiving one too. Yeah. Now, I think in the red zone, if it gets down tight, Zeke's the guy. I think between the 20s, I think Pollard's going to get a lot of work today. Yep. All right, our last game of the day, we have the Bills and the Saints. And like the, the previous game, this one's lost some of its luster. The Saints have lost players. Um, really questionable, you know, the, the quarterback spot right now. And then Buffalo goes home last weekend and just lays an egg, you know, against the Colts. So you got the, the Bills giving six and a half on the road over under here, 48 and a half. You know, the Bills had such a grip on the division title a month ago, and now they've got to be feeling some pressure with the way the Patriots are playing. Yeah. Uh, the season's kind of getting away from them. So I'm certain they're inspired. That doesn't guarantee anything in this league. And there's going to be some some pressure that's building on this coaching staff and this team and Josh Allen, frankly, who I adore. Uh, but he didn't play well last week. I mean, the Colts just took a two on their home field. I don't know if they bounce back right away. I mean, they're 5-11 and 11, uh, against the spread against the uh, NFC South. Uh Again, you're you're facing a banged up, wounded team in in New Orleans. No Camara, which is such a loss. That's why the line continues to go the direction wow. of the Bills up to six and a half. Now it's crazy. Uh, but I, I I think the Saints find a way, Timmy. I, I I don't think they match up with Buffalo. If you just look at the rosters and say, okay, we're going to handicap what what's sitting here. But I think the Saints at home against a, a Buffalo team that's really scruffling right now. I can see the Bills winning. I just can't see the Bills blowing them out in New Orleans. I'm going to take the points. I, I think there's a decent chance that Buffalo wins a tight game. Senator? Uh, I agree, um, but I will say this. Um, three names, Demario Davis, Marshawn Lattimore, Cameron Jordan. Um, three. Their defense is uh, very good uh, when, when they're – in simpatico when they're in when they're together um they're they're really good i mean they're not digs good you know who's probably going to be the defensive player of the year for dallas but they they're good and they can stop you and they can disrupt you and i think when um you know you look at again the inconsistency that the bills have played with um and the colts uh are, are making a name for themselves patriots are making a name for themselves they've got the pressure so um my only I agree it's going to be a close game just because it's at home uh, in in Dal uh, in New Orleans. It's uh, that's loud. And um, there's some good – I mean, their fans show up, and it's Thanksgiving. And so out of the three games, this is the one I want to watch for sure. I mean, this is going to be a good game. Um, but without Kamara and it's Ingram back yet, again, I haven't checked He's Twitter this morning. He's going to give it a go. He, they, they've called it a game time decision, but uh, all the chatter out of practice as recent as yesterday is that that Ingram's going to give it a go. They are really banged up. I mean, it, yeah. the Saints on offense are, are think if they give up points, if if Buffalo gets into the mid to upper 20s and maybe even to the 30s, it's going to be hard for the Saints to keep up. If the Saints are going to win or end or cover, they're going to have to keep it a little lower scoring. I just They're going to have a hard time producing – a bunch of points. It's an intriguing game. I mean, it if is. you're a Vikings fan, 
you certainly want Buffalo to win. I mean, we can yes. all do the math where the Vikings are lying. These middling teams in the NFC need to lose some games. I'm just, you know, looking at this from a point spread, uh, six and a half Buffalo with all that pressure. I just, it feels like it's going to be a grinder. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think the both of these defenses are, I mean, bills are, are top in the, in the league. I mean, and they, they allow the fewest yards total. Um, and then, but specifically passing, uh, and the saints aren't far behind on, on stopping a rush, but that's a good thing. Cause the bills don't really have a, a run game unless you're Josh Allen. And then Moss has a, has a flash here or there. So, um, I don't know. I think their offenses have been inconsistent at times. So let's see. But, um, I think, uh, Trim, Tr- Trevor Simeon, uh, is not a, not a starting quarterback. It's kind of like a Nick Folk. Right. Yep. He just doesn't have that leadership, but man, the guy can ball. He can play. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He knows his way around the field. So I think he's going to go to his guy um, that really he's kind of have a connection with the last couple of weeks. And that's Trey Quan Smith. Um, and I think that um, he's going to target him a lot. And I think Trey Quan Smith's going to have a have a game. Um, that's just my prediction. I may it may be far fetched out there, but I think. Um, he's, he knows what he's doing too. And I think that, um, he's been the bright spot, um, the surprising bright spot on that, um, Saints. Everybody always talks about Kamara and then Ingram coming in. It's like Smith has done a good job. I think he's played really well. Well, you got a couple of receivers that are are potential, but can, can Simeon get him the ball? Does he have enough time? I remember him passing the gopher silly. You know, when he was at Northwestern yeah. and thinking, man, he'd make a good NFL quarterback. So I know he's got that somewhere in him. Can he do it at the NFL level against that defense? I, I don't know. Um, so you have, you said, Traquan Smith, you had plus 37 and a half. That's your thinking big em, yep. that game. And KG, that is a big em. I mean, that's a big <laughs> think right there. I mean, that's that's, a, so. that's big risk. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yep. So. And KG, you got to play for this game, too. Mine's a little safer. Uh, Stefan Diggs is hot right now. And we we watched this guy when he was in Minnesota. He runs hot and cold, and when this guy's on a roll, just get out of his way. And so, yeah, I'm playing the Saints in the game, but if if the Saints are competitive, that means Josh Allen has to throw the ball. And if he has to throw the ball, there is no question in Buffalo who his go-to guy is. Double-digit targets the last couple weeks, touchdowns the last couple weeks. He's hot right now. He's plus money again, plus 120. He will score tonight. So I'm going to call for a Buffalo win, 24 uh, to 21, and I'm going to call for a Stephon Diggs touchdown. And just like that, that second serving, you know, you, you want all the fixings. Let's just try to get all the fixings home, all the prop plays, all the point spreads, and uh, we'll fill our pockets with some cash here on Turkey Day. Sounds good to me. That sounds yeah, good to me. You guys, I appreciate you giving me some time on your, your Thanksgiving Day morning. Um, we are going to have a Let's Play every day in uh, 26 minutes. Now, we weren't going to. And some people reached out to me and said, hey, if you want to do a show, I would want to be on it. And so I'm like, okay. So we have four people lined up to be a uh, guest today. You guys can stop by if you want to. My goal in the next 25 minutes, besides doing social media, is to make a Bloody Mary. So Ooh. I am going to be day drinking during LPE. So I think that sets the to right tone in, for the holiday. Good, good yes. job, Timmy. I <laughs> love yeah. it. Here we go. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, guys. And enjoy the holiday, everybody out there. Thank you for being a part of our show. And yes. uh, we're very thankful to have it and, and thankful for the day we have ahead. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. You guys are the best. I'm thankful for both of you. Enjoy your day with your friends and your family today. And I appreciate you. And uh, Kevin and I, we will be back at it again uh, tomorrow morning. Kevin's working tomorrow, but we're going to get the uh, we're going to get the college plays in because there's a full Friday slate of games. Oh yeah. So so we yeah. are thankful for all of that. And I'll count on your movie review tomorrow morning as well. I'll have the movie review. I'll have college plays, and then I'll zip over to the X for a little matinee with the uh, the Wild and the Winnipeg Jets. Sounds like a pretty good Friday. He's a busy man. Carla, thank you so much. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. As Kevin said, thank you to all of you for watching. It's Gorgomatic. We love doing this show. We hope you get value out of it because we know it's never, ever automatic. But you know what? It's never, ever, 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 never going to be not Gorgomatic. And every (laughs) once in a while, once a week at least, we are going to think big of. Yes, we are. There we go.